Have you ever thought about, like really thought about the thing that keeps you getting up every morning? It's like there's this driving angst that says today will be better than yesterday and tomorrow has to be better than today. And for a bunch of us, it never actually is. But there's this like, this, this movement forward that keeps us getting up morning after morning after morning, driven by something that says, it's going to be better. I'm gonna bring something new. I'm hoping for something else. Today, God has set the table. Advent in its very definition is arrival and it's preparing us and it's putting us in this place of expectation for there to be this, this upheaval of, of peace, love, hope, and joy. In this, this Hebrew idea of peace, it's like a new beginning. And in a new beginning, it's taking us back to the creation itself. The place that there was this, this void, that there was this chaos, that there was this absolutely nothingness. And then God spoke and there was like this pinprick of light, the advent, the, the uh, arrival. Uh, there's this idea that in that speaking and in that pinprick, in that separation, order began to happen. And all of a sudden, peace began to be born into the midst of chaos. This is the place that the idea of the harpy of shalom comes into being. And this is pure peace. The idea of shalom goes beyond this, um, this concept of the peace on earth or, or peace between people. It is shalom has this peace of understanding that is spiritual, this peace that is physical, this peace that is, is psychological. Shalom is peace holistic, peace in all things. Peace that's an exhale. Peace that gets you up every morning. There's a story of two brothers, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob, he stole from his brother everything he had. His identity, his inheritance, his property, his future. And as they grew up, there was this huge separation that took place. If you think about separation between brothers, it's like this, this, this primal pain that happened. And Jacob becomes increasingly insecure about who he is as a person. And what he did as a kid caused him so much chaos to the point that as adults, that, that there was this coming together and this, this anxiety that he thought of seeing his brother again. So he gathered all these gifts and all of his property and all of these things to say, I am so sorry. Can we put the past behind us? But he knew that there was no way of putting the past behind us. So he created this caravan and, and, and huge gifts and presents to bring to his brother. And, the, and he came to his brother and his brother saw him and he saw all the gifts and saw all the caravans and he saw all the cattle and everything and he saw his brother. And in the midst of everything, in the midst of the angst, in the midst of the, the things that were done to him, he only saw his brother. And he ran up to his brother and he hugged him and he forgave him as if all of the gifts meant nothing. It was just his brother, his brother's heart, his brother's past, his, his brother's present, and his brother's future. And in this moment, the Hebrew people say there was this idea of shalom that happened. There was peace between brothers. Day after day, things seem to be the same. Although our hearts are good and there's this desire for things to be different, culturally, they're not. The same things that have happened for centuries are happening today. There's battles, 
that there's diseases, there's poverty. There is this desire inside of us for things to be better. This is the place that Shalom is born. Shalom, though, can be really simplified into this idea that, 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 that there will be peace globally and there will, everyone will stop fighting. But that is not the heart of Shalom because how can there be peace globally if there's not peace within our country? And how can there be peace in our country if there's not peace within our cities? And how can there be peace within our cities if there's not peace within our families? And how can there be peace in our families if there is not peace within ourselves? Shalom encompasses all of these things and it starts with us, our hearts, our thoughts, our physicality, our spirituality, and who you are as God's child. Shalom begs the question, do you know whose you are? Because this is the beginning of peace. As you light the peace candle, may you have a profound sense of shalom. May you know whose you are. And may you see others through the same perspective. May you pray shalom for others, seeing them as sons and daughters of God. And may shalom impact every interaction you have, bringing peace to the world around you. In Christ we pray and in Christ we proclaim, amen.